Hello everyone, welcome. We are looking at Find the Result Part B, Lesson 9.2 of Math. This is Monday. Happy Monday. So great to spend this time with you and let's go ahead and dive right in. For question check-in, let's go ahead and make sure that those listening ears are turned on. Eyes are on my screen. You can show me cactus hands that there's nothing in your hands and wave good morning to each other. I know we're virtual, but we're still connected in some way, shape, or form through this recording. So great to spend this time with you. You can put your hands down and take a deep breath. Go ahead and let that breath out. Are you going to give this lesson your absolute best? Give me two thumbs up. Perfect job. I'm holding one hand, my laptop with one hand. So that is why I'm not giving you two thumbs up, but consider it two thumbs up. All right, guys. Remember that we are recording every lesson that we have here so that you can go back and watch the lesson again if you ever need to, which for which for these you do have to watch the recording. So here it is. Um, and don't forget about our classroom rules. Lesson goals. I can find the result in a take from problem. All right, so good morning today. We are going to talk about take from problems. So that means by the end of this lesson, you will be able to find the results or the answer in a take from problem. Let's go ahead and have some ID time where I show you how. Um, this is a time for you to just actively listen. Sorry guys, it was the dog. <laughs> to actively listen, that way you can practice in we do and you do time. So let's go ahead and have our I do time. The very first thing we wanna do in a story problem is step one, understand it, read the problem. So let's go ahead and read the problem. Juan bakes 12 muffins. He gives five muffins to his friends. How many muffins does he have left? In step one, understand it, I also want to underline or circle what is important, what I know, and also what I need to know what I'm trying to find out. So let's go ahead and circle what we've been given. I know that Juan bakes 12 muffins. It says he gives five muffins to his friends. My question is, how many muffins does he have left? Okay, let's imagine this out. Juan bakes 12 muffins. Okay, I have my 12 muffins here, right? He gives five muffins away. So does he have those five muffins anymore? No. He gives them to his friends and they eat them, right? So how many are left means I'm not going to add here. I'm going to have to subtract because I'm taking away five muffins from 12. And I'm wondering, what is that missing part? What is left over? How many muffins does he have left after he's given five out of the 12 muffins away? So I've been given my total. 12 is my total. I know that one of my parts is five but I am missing a different part, okay? So I'm going to need to subtract in order to find my answer. Now step one, understand it, is complete. So we can move on to step two, plan it, where we choose a strategy to help us solve. I am going to use the number sentence or the start, change, end method or strategy to solve. Now, looking at the strategy, this is how you would draw it. Square plus square equals square. Start, change, end is labeled, right? We start with an amount, we're changing something about that amount, and we're ending with something else. Okay, now I need to make a quick change here. I'm not going to be adding, right? We decided we are subtracting, so I put my subtraction symbol there. Now, what am I starting with? Juan bakes 12 muffins, right? That's what we started with. He got up early, he baked his muffins. That's what we're starting with is 12. So I'm going to write the number 12 underneath the start label. He gives five muffins to his friends. That is what we're changing, right? What changed about him having 12 muffins is that he's going to give five of them away. And what is that going to equal? So that's what I'm trying to figure out, right? How many muffins does he have left? I'll draw a triangle here just to represent that I don't know. That's my unknown part, right? 12 minus five equals blank. Now, 
In order to solve, now we're moving on to step three, solve it, because we plugged in everything we know into our strategy, right? So plan it, step two, complete. Step three, solve it. I can draw a picture to also help me with this. Anytime you get stuck and you don't know what five take away from 12 is or what 12 minus five is, you could draw a picture to help you. So how many muffins do I have? I start out with 12, right? So let's draw 12 muffins. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I am taking away how many? Five. So let's scratch out five. One, two, three, four, five. How many are left? Let's count how many are left over. One, two, three, four, five six, seven, which means 12 minus five will equal seven. And that is my answer. Seven what? Remember, this is a story problem. So we have to answer either in a complete sentence or we have to indicate what seven means. Seven what? Seven fish? Seven Minecraft games? Seven what? We are talking about muffins here, right? How many muffins does he have left? Seven muffins. Right, so you could have written out Juan has seven muffins left, or you could write seven muffins, and that's perfectly acceptable. All right, I want you to pause this recording, grab your materials, so grab something to write on, something to write with, and then you can come back to your seats. And we will work on we do time where we do one problem together. All right, friends, this is we do time where we work on a problem together. So I do not want you working ahead. I do not want you doing this problem on your own. I want you following step by step with me, working together with me. OK, that way, after you do we do time, you can move on to you do time where you do a problem on your own and show me what you know. All right, let's first step one understand it let's read the problem go ahead and read with me 15 cars are in a parking lot six cars drive away how many cars are left All right let's go ahead and circle what we've been given or underline what we've been given so i have 15 cars that are in a parking lot six cars drive away and my question says i'll do a different color how many cars are left so let's go ahead and look further into this story problem i'm going to visualize i have 15 cars in a parking lot six of them want to go to dairy queen so they drive away how many cars are left the word away and the word left are huge indicators here. When I look at the word away and I look at the word left, I know that I am probably subtracting. And if I think about it further, I know that I'm subtracting because if I have 15 cars, six of them drive away, and my question is, how many cars are left there? I'm not going to add six more cars because the cars drove away. It doesn't say six car, six more cars drove into the parking lot, right? It says six of those cars drove away minus those cars. So I need to subtract in order to figure out how many cars are left in the parking lot. Now I can move on to step two, plan it. I'm using the start, change, end strategy to solve. However, I'm subtracting, right? Not adding. So I'm putting my subtraction symbol here. Now let's go ahead and plug in what we've been given. I know that I have 15 cars in the parking lot. That's what I'm starting with. What is the change? What is changing? Six cars drive away. That's the change. Now, how many cars are left? That is my unknown part that I'm trying to figure out. And just to take a step back into step under, um, one, understand it. 15 cars is your total. Six cars is your part. And what's left, that is going to be my missing part. 
Now, 15 minus 6 equals what? If you don't know what 15 minus 6 is, draw a picture to help you. So I'm going to draw 15 cars or 15 circles. So I'm going to pause here for a second because we're in we are in we do time. What I want you to do is I want you to draw your start change end method. Square minus square equals square. You can write start change and end above the squares or you can just draw, I mean write the letter S, letter C, letter E. And then plug in what we've been given 15 and 6 and your triangle where the end is. Pause this recording. Have all of that and then you can press play when you're ready to go and we will move on um, with our redo time further. All right, to finish up step two, plan it, I'm going to draw 15 circles and then I'll move on to step three, solve it. So you should have all of this on your board and now you're drawing 15 circles with me or 15 ovals. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I don't know why I chose to squish that all together instead of drawing it across. Sorry about that, but you get the picture. So go ahead and draw your 15 circles. You can pause this recording and press play when you're done with that. All right, assuming that you are ready to go, how many cars are left? 15 minus what? 15 minus 6. So let's go ahead and scratch out 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 cars drove away. How many are left? Let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So what is my end? 9. 15 minus 6 equals 9. 9 what? 9 cars. How many cars are left? 9 cars are left. You can pause this recording. You can have all of this on your board. Learning coaches, I would love it if you would take a picture of this and send it to me on Class Dojo email or text message. Once your student is done with all of this, you can take a picture and send it to me. And that will count as credit for watching this recording. Students, you can pause this recording, have all of this done, have your learning coach take that picture and send it to me. And then you can press play whenever you are ready for UU time. All right, guys, go ahead and take a well-deserved brain break and then we will move on to you do time. You can pause this recording and press play when you are ready. All right, guys, it is you do time. So make sure you are ready to go. Very first thing you need to do is step one, understand it, read the problem, circle, underline what you've been given, um, what you need to know. I'll actually complete this step with you in case your learning coach is preoccupied and you need help reading the problem. I'll go ahead and complete step one with you. However, uh, actually, step two, I'll draw the um, strategy for you, the start change in method, since this is our one of our first times doing this. But you are going to solve on your own so that I have you practicing. OK, so let's go ahead and do step one, understand it together. Thirteen apples are in a tree. Six apples fall off the tree. How many apples are left? All right, let's go ahead and circle or underline what we know or what we've been given. So I know that I have 13 apples on a tree. I know that six of those apples fall off the tree. Off is a key word. It's an indicator. It's a clue. My question is, how many apples are left? So if I have 13 apples on a tree, six apples fall off, how many apples are left? I'm going to need to subtract. 13 is my total. Six is the part that I've been given. How many apples are left is the part that I'm trying to find. Step two, understand it. 
you want to make sure that you draw your start change in strategy on your board. Square minus square equals square. The first square represents your start, what you're starting with. The second square represents your change, what you are changing. The third square represents your end. Okay, I know that I am starting with 13 apples. My change is that six apples fall off the tree. How many apples are left is what I'm trying to find. You are going to do the rest on your own and solve. Draw a picture to help you if you need. Pause this recording. Solve the problem. Make sure you have all of this on your board. Show your work, your answer. Make sure you write your answer fully out. Blank apples. And then I want you to press play whenever you are finished with that. Learning Coach, you'll take a picture of it. Send it to me on Class Dojo email or text message. Then I want you to press play and I'm going to reveal the correct answer and the correct way to do it. But I don't want you to watch that portion of the recording until you've practiced doing this on your own because it's important that you practice being independent and trying your best with what you know. Okay? Pause this recording, do all of that, and whenever you're ready to check your work, you can press play. All right, friends, let's go ahead and work on solving this problem. So I'm going to draw 13 circles to represent my 13 apples. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13. Okay, I'm taking away six apples from 13. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six. How many are left? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven what? Seven apples are left, is my answer. Check your work. Wonderful job, you guys. What did we cover today? We found the result in a take from problem. You guys did such a great job. Wonderful watching this with you. Um, learning coaches, make sure you send me a picture of we do you do time. You guys may log off. I'll see you next time. Bye.